Hey, what's your name? Um, I'm Bevis. And uh, this is a lifeboat of some sort? Yeah, uh, she's a 46 foot 9 Watson class lifeboat built in 1956 at uh, Samuel White's yard in Cowes, Isle of Wight. So what sort of uh, life has she had? What's her history? Uh, interesting history. Uh, she was the RNLI's exhibit at the first ever London Boat Show, uh, which was at Olympia in 1956. And then she went to uh, Angle in Milford Haven, South Pembrokeshire, and she had a 30-year career at Angle, um, saving about 71 lives, according to the, uh, the records. Yeah. Did some big rescues too, um, keeping big tankers off the rocks, off St Anne's Head. Um, she was involved with the Fastnet race in 79, towing a lot of yachts back to Milford Haven from that. Yeah. And um, she's done some good service. And then, then she finally did a, a just over a year in Wicklow in Ireland. Yeah. And uh, she was retired in 89. Just shut the, um... And she's been in private ownership ever since. So how did you get involved with the um, I bought uh, a Liverpool class, uh, the Nelly and Charlie, which is over here. Um, which one is it? It's the, the next one. And um, I was on the lookout for a, uh, a historic yacht. Came across uh, Nellie and Charlie, who was uh, she was okay, but she'd been converted and needed saving. And then uh, this one came along that was in dire need of restoration. She was complete but original, um, but she needed quite a lot of work. And to be honest, it's been a real pleasure doing it. Now, what's the engine like? Uh, two engines. Um, the Fords were put in by the RNLI in 1979. Um, originally they were built with four-cylinder ferry diesels, which were the RNLI's own um, diesel engine manufacturer. But they were a forging and casting company in Southampton and made engines for the RNLI. And then um, they, they were a bit heavy and slow, to be frank, yeah. and RNLI decided to change them later in these boats' lives and uh, they put six-cylinder Ford engines in, so they were lighter but a lot faster uh -huh. and quicker to warm up, so you know, a lifeboat needs to go to action stations pretty damn quick. And, so, uh, what made you decide on lifeboats? Um, I'm, I'm a motorsport engineer yeah. and um, I've restored lots of vintage cars and things like that, uh -huh. but there's nothing quite like the provenance of a lifeboat yeah. and it's a restoration challenge because it's you know, a mahogany hull, duralumin superstructure on this, and you know, this stuff is quarter inch dural plate, beautifully rolled and riveted. Yeah. It's fiendishly difficult stuff to work with, and, yeah. you know, respect to the guys that designed and built these things. And they're really solid, you know, so they're a piece of history that needs preserving. And as British, we, we have a, a duty to preserve maritime history, in my humble opinion. <laughs> That's what Britain's all about. Yeah, it? it is. And, you know, the Commonwealth. Yeah, exactly. And we're pretty bad at it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we've let a lot of Come historic... Years, yeah. History that's just demolished. Uh, it's yeah. terrible. You know, it's a fantastic history here. You know, and it's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here, yeah. in all honesty. And, you know, you see around it, a lot of it destroyed and a lot of it abused, shall we well, say. You think they'd have a monument to the Mayflower Steps, a proper monument? Absolutely, the yeah. The people or yeah. Like that, yeah. Just looks like a, a step so to get on a ferry. Of, instead of something trivial. Yeah, exactly. Everything's petty-minded. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, any chance of a quick look around? Of course, yeah. Come on, on in. Yeah, come on in. Good morning. I'll um, put the engine room lights on. You can see inside the engine room. Thanks very much. So what sort of engine is it? They're uh, six cylinder, normally aspirated Fords. Yeah. Um, Derated by the RNLI for reliability. Uh -huh. And all the copper pipe and all the fittings are exactly as fitted by the RNLI. So what you see is exactly how the 1950s and 60s engine room was in a, in a lifeboat. All the instrumentation, the fire extinguishers, everything is exactly as they were. And how long did it take to renovate it? Um, I'm getting on a bit, so I put a team of guys on it to help me, and um, effectively it's taken about three years to get to this point. Uh -huh. But um, what I wanted to do was not have it sit in a boatyard rotting away for ten years, and while you sort of do little bits, 
spend a bit of time and effort on it and get out and enjoy it. Are these sort of boats virtually unsinkable? They were quoted as being unsinkable in their day because the um, compartments were watertight and had air cases for buoyancy. Yeah. So you could damage certain parts of the boat and they would still remain afloat. But of course, in Extremis, and the, the Penley Solomon Brown is a, a, a shame of an example, really. Um, you know, she broke up with massive impacts in a, a very impossible situation. Uh -huh. So, you, you know, they're unsinkable to a point, yeah. and you can't um, take them past that point, really. Yeah, and, uh, and can she roll? Uh, she was um, self-writing, um, she wasn't built as self-writing, she was built as an open cockpit boat originally. Yeah. And um, in the late 60s they put uh, the roof over the uh, wheelhouse here. Um, but the self-writing mechanism was an airbag on the aft deck. Yeah. Um, the, the wireless room behind you is a, a watertight compartment for the wireless operator uh -huh. and the, the radar. And there used to be an airbag on the roof so that she'd self right And yeah. there was an air cylinder, or two air cylinders to be correct, under the aft deck. Yeah. And if she inverted, the airbag would go off on the roof and she'd pop up. And um, how many people can she evacuate in an emergency? Um, difficult to say, really. Um, there are odd occasions where uh, th there was a crew of six or eight. Normally, they try to get eight on, that she'd run with six. Um, there are rescues where you've seen 30, 40 people on these boats. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, that's good, con relatively good conditions on the deck. Um, the survivor cabin forward, you could probably get six people in. Um, stretch a case in the back, um, and that's about it. Um, but the, uh, I think the survivor cabin, you know, if you were picked up in there. You didn't care what the uh, the quality of the ride was. You know, you were happy to be picked up for these yeah, things. Yeah. Well, there's a few boats, uh, a few of these sort of boats in the classic uh, boat rally this year. Um, oh, is it like a club? No, it, it's a. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say it's a loose arrangement of friends. We're not as formal as a club. Yeah. Um, so there's no bureaucracy and you know, no falling out like you get with clubs. Yeah. And we just like going to events like this to represent the old lifeboats because we just like the boats. Uh -huh. One or two of us are uh, ex-crew members as well from our own ally. Um, Frank, the skipper of the boat next door, Frank Smith, he was the coxswain at Solcombe, yeah. um, very well known. And um, I'm pleased to say a good friend and you know we, we both enjoy taking the boats out together. So uh, yeah, it's a well worth the thing to do, you know, yeah. come to these events and represent the RNLI as was. And, yeah. You know, see the progress to lifeboats of today. Really. Cheers, thanks a lot. But it's a pleasure. I'd like to thank Bevin. Also thanks to the Plymouth Classic Boat Organisers. This has been a Chris Summerfield Media Production 2016. You can contact me through ccs2012 at hotmail.com and also if you can help me, sponsor me through christophersummerfield at gmail.com. That's on PayPal.